Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Excited to have the crew together. Hashtag Mornis Project. That's what you got to do. Hashtag Mornis Project and everything you look at, Rita. And of course, uh, Facebook, you got to check out his group. Sil Sebastian Benesid joining us here from Nobelia.org. Really changing the way we think, the way of impeccability. Hey, the book. Hey, the books, yes. plural. There's so much yes. to this man, to this woman, and I'm excited to have them back. Took a little hiatus. I'm glad to see you both. How are you? Oh, Thank very you good, so very much. good. How about you, Bina? I'm I'm very well and I'm very excited. And it is good to see you. So refreshing, yes. Jill. Yeah. Thank you have you. very, very, very yes. positive presence, very positive and good vibes. So yes, that's wonderful you're looking, to be here. You're looking refreshed. That's you're what looking a little refreshed. vacation does and a little tan does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, wonderful. Oh, you got a good tan. Yes, oh, it's working you. well. Welcome well. back, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, to the show. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself before we begin, as always. Wow, yes. wonderful, wonderful. We do every day. We we are live on on in my Facebook group. And to find it, it's just S-A-S-I group. Just uh, put it into Facebook and it'll come right up. You know, we, we pronounce it Sassy group, but uh, it's, I guess, Sassy. <laughs> it's just S-A-S-I, <laughs> standing for self-awareness self-improvement as the first part of the name of the group and then it goes on to say it's a self-awareness self-improvement self-discovery discussion group <laughs> so lots going on yes. there anyway we we are live and what we do is we share mourners culture which is a culture that we've put together we've created it comes from programs that i put together that i do and from the books and from everything that we do and there's a lot to mourners culture it's a culture and it has its own language the language of conceptionality there's a lot to it so this is what we do we share we share mourners culture and share yes that's it we don't have any agenda to get followers or likes or any stuff like that. No, we're just sharing for the pure joy and the magic of sharing itself, right? Sharing has a, has a real magic to it when we share. And talking about sharing, I have something to share, right? Bina, I messaged, I texted Bina in the middle of the night. I don't know if you saw my message there. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I, 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 when I'm like sleeping, you woke me up, of I course. wake up. What's that? She's like, you woke me up. How dare you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I don't know if, if Bina pays any attention to the text in the night. Do you, Bina, when they come in the middle of the night? Yeah. Well, also, since Bina's literally on the other side of the earth from, from me, she's 12 yes. hours away, time zone. So she's literally on yes. the other side of the earth. Um, my middle of the night is middle of the morning or day for Bina. Yeah. So it's pretty yes. safe. Well, but even so, I, I think being a probably you you turn off your phone when you go to sleep. I would imagine, yes. yeah, yes, yeah. So, yes, yeah. always. So, no risk there. <laughs> I, I just put it there so I don't forget. Yeah. So what did I text you, Bina? Do you remember? Did you even see? Yes. Did you even see this? Yes, yes. I just want to read it exactly as you said. Because so. sometimes I send the most profound things and then the next morning, uh, like nothing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do take time to, to really, really absorb things because whatever he shares always have many layers and always yeah. have such moreness and such depth. So you cannot just respond, oh, yes, that's wonderful. You cannot do this because if you really want to make it your own and if you really want to change and transform your life, you have to ponder on it. You have to absorb it, let it sink in. And then, of course, right. So the last one was still hierarchy of motivations. Right. Now, now listen to what Bina said there. See, I was talking about mourners culture okay. and the language of conceptionality. Bina said you have to make it your own. Now, in language of conceptionality okay. and part of the way of impeccability, we have your dictionary of power. Yeah. Everybody makes their own dictionary of power. And in Bina's dictionary of power, she's got make it my own or mm -hmm. make it your own, hyphenated, capitalized, to make it into a power conception. Because that's so crucial for okay. any kind of change. If you just adopt things from elsewhere, it's like they sit on your hard drive, like you're downloading an upgrade. Yeah, you have to install it and making it your own. That's the installation process. Yeah, makes a big yes. difference. Anyway, so hierarchy of motivations. Okay. Now, uh, I, I just said it in the brief way, but really it to the full title would be hierarchy of motivations, goals, aspirations, ambitions, ideas, beliefs, etc. Mm. All of the above. 
Yeah, yeah. So big deal. Now, what do I mean by this? What is the the underlying uh, understanding here? It is when we take anything that motivates us, which is, you know, a goal, a motivation, an aspiration, a belief, idea. We can be motivated by a desire. It could be in there, desires and wants. Anything which motivates us. And we say, hmm, all right, let's, let's take a typical motivation. And we take, like, wealth. Yes? Now, if we are motivated by wealth, and especially if this motivation comes to us early via our, our, our upbringing culture, the culture okay. that, well, that culture could be the culture of your home, community, country, mm -hmm. world, doesn't matter. If you acquire that particular motivation early on, that does not necessarily mean that you are going to be ethical mm -hmm. and act with integrity in the pursuit of that motivation. Because it's wealth. The, the goal is to get wealth. Mm -hmm. How you get it doesn't matter. Same with winning. Yes. When people are obsessed with winning and uh, they, it's like win at all costs, right? Yeah. Winning is absolutely everything. However, if you, the hierarchy of your motivations is first of all to act with integrity and to act ethically, to act in, in, in accordance to your conscience, yeah, to act impeccably, etc. Then, no matter what Man. secondary mm -hmm. motivation comes, you are always going to be covered. Now, from an individual point of view, yes, this is very important. I got all sorts of weird things going on here today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Now, th from, from an individual point of view, yes, this is, you know, it's, yeah, of course it's important. But from a cultural overall point of view, this is absolutely crucial. Because especially, for instance, winning, we see this so often with winning and with wealth, that the pursuit of it completely lets go of yeah. any sensibility and sobriety. Because that goal has been set as, uh, as primary and as so important, it must be accomplished. And look at people with wealth. They just keep going and going and going and going. And it's a never-ending thing, right? They never have enough. Yeah. Now, Okay, it's not necessarily a negative, but also how they get there. I mean, we see all the unethical behavior that comes from the mm. pursuit. And also just winning. You know, even in your day-to-day -day life, when I grew up as a child, uh, because, you know, being right and good, I grew up in the very first uh, uh, community. I grew up in very, yeah. very strictly religious. So the, the, was being good was absolutely the most prime motivation yeah first that came first being obedient came second now i didn't much follow the second one but okay. i certainly attached to the, the the first one because i saw the artificiality fortunately of the uh, second one you cannot be blindly obedient and i saw this unfortunately in that community they were mm. very much blind obedient and it really killed them inside mm. it, it made them inadvertent hypocrites and that ate them up it was really Oof. really sad Right. I mean, I saw it even as a very young child, I could see this anyway. Uh, now, so when you when you have this, uh, um, the, the, your ethics and your integrity, your conscience and doing right and good, if that comes first, then whatever you do afterwards doesn't subvert you, doesn't doesn't corrupt you. But talk about winning. I was saying I saw this. Uh, well, even today, I see this when mm -hmm. when people are so obsessed with winning. Right, and they play games. Mm, they, my goodness, I they hate this. Cheat in the games. It's like mm -hmm. I mean, you're playing Monopoly and you cheat or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, the way I grew up. That was absolutely impossible. Mm. Whoever I played with, you know, my friends, my family, you know, brothers and sisters, and I have a bunch of them. It was just unthinkable. It never happened, right? Yeah. And yeah, and you know, if you speak to many people, they say, "What do you mean it never happened?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I give you another example, right? Because that was so primary. Uh, when I came to America, people would chat and, and you know, just have a regular conversation. And yeah. they say, oh, you know, when we were kids and, and you know, like, ah, uh, you go shoplifting, you know, like kids do. And uh, I'm like, what do you mean like kids uh, do? Well, well, kids do that. Yeah. Okay. Like, like, what do you mean like kids do? Yeah. Like, like I, I'm saying, you're saying that like it's a natural thing, like all kids do. They say, yeah, well, didn't you shoplift any kids? I said, no, I didn't even know any kids that shoplifted. No, not a single one. Not a single one of my friends have been there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yes. Just, it was never a thought, never a consideration. It was like, are you crazy? You know, uh, the difference in the culture. Why? Because in one culture, that primacy of doing right and good was so stressed. Now, okay, yeah. they went overboard a bit with their thing. But my point is, it's about the hierarchy of goals. Mm -hmm. When you have a hierarchy of goals and your, your goals in the culture that you grow up in is, you know, ambition, status, wealth. Or artificial goals that don't have totally. integrity as their core, then you get this nonsense that's happening, right? Because what is the motivation behind that shoplifting typically? It, it's status, right? Which is a very primary motivation in superiority culture. Yeah. And for the kids, why are they shoplifting? Because of status with their friends, to be cool, to fit in, yeah? That's usually the issue, right? Or to rebel. They think they should in some way do this, yeah? It's absurd. Yes. It's really absurd. Um, because their, their motivations are completely messed up. They don't have motivations that are real. Yeah? And it's not just a motivation. I'm using motivation uh, to come. It's belief system, right? Yeah. Ideology, aspiration, ambition. Yeah. It, right? um, I was, uh, uh, fortunately, I had that root of, of doing what's right according to your conscience. But my mother, ambition to her, she was a completely mm -hmm. bad person. So my father... Ambition was like the golden word to them. That was the thing that they would have loved to see the most in their children, was for uh. the children ambitious. But think of it, right? When you're ambitious, are you willing to sell your soul for your ambition? No. No, not good. Not good. Does this make sense, what I'm saying? Bina, I'm, I'm, I'm keen to hear your comments. And and while you do that, I want to try and take care of something. I'm listening. I'm listening. Just go, Bina, go. Okay. Yes. Yes, because uh, <laughs> ambition is something, yes. Uh, even though the culture was refined, but it's still it was yeah. that ambition was not a clear thing. So we all, all grew up and uh, me also that I was so, uh, so inclined towards this idea that, okay, yes, we have to be ambitious. That was the should, the should mindset still keep um, uh, referring about. That he, the should mindset was that, okay, everybody is so ambitious and this is good and we have to be. This is not a bad thing. Again, what Sil is uh, saying that because... It is exactly the difference between the fine dining and the buffet. If you Ooh. if you just look at yourself, that okay, how, what what we are doing, and how just observe people when they are coming out of restaurants or hotels after fine dining and after buffet, you can see the difference. <laughs> this is exactly what happened when we go just just buy the shirts and how, okay, yes, ambition, and then yeah. I need to collect and collect and collect without having actual real deliberate choices. This is the difference exactly like that. For me, it is very clear that, okay, if you have a fine dining, you will enjoy that because these are your choices, what you are eating, even, even it is going to be very smaller okay, in comparison to the buffet, like you have abundance, plethora of foods there, but you will not feel good at the end. You will see that. You can see that people coming out and they feel uncomfortable in their own being because they were stuffing themselves. But the fine dining was their deliberate choices and they were making and it makes you more more uh, happy and more fulfilled and more satisfied and you feel happy about yourself so the the idea of ambition is to keep running aspiration on the other hand yes it has very clear motives that how you are getting yes i like to have this particular dish i really love that but how i'm going to have this this wow. is the difference this is the difference between aspiration and ambition so when my conscience is clear when i'm achieving anything in my life uh, again, uh, uh, as far as I understand, still is not against any uh, any goal achievement. No. Correct. No, not at all. As but long as it's appropriate. Not to compromise your integrity, not to com not on the stake of your character yeah. and basic ethics. So this is yeah. this is the difference between the ambition and the aspiration for me. So, sir, please yeah. continue. And and that's that hierarchy. See now in superiority yeah. paradigm, hierarchy is a very negative thing because it's all about comparison and comparing, putting yourself higher, pulling others down to mm -hmm. uh, or pushing people down. All this uh, to put yourself up. It's an artificial goal, and that's why the hierarchy of motivations or hierarchy of goals, hierarchy of intents. When you start to see, wow. Yeah. You know, this goal doesn't have any ethics to it. It doesn't have any integrity to it. It doesn't have any realness to it. Mm -hmm. Who am I doing this for? The ambition usually. Who is it for? It's for the approval of others. Others, not 
ourselves. Like really? Come on, you want to live your life for other people? You're not living your life, you're living their lives, or at least the idea of it, right? You're living an artificial life, in other words. Now, again, ambition, if that's what you really want and it fulfills you, and you don't care what anybody says, if you achieve your ambition, everybody may hate it and you're still happy, all right, go ahead. You know? then, then it's right for you. That's the key point here, right? That's the key point. You need to do what's right for you. And that's the key. And like Bina said, the key crucial element when it comes to your goals, ambitions, ideas, beliefs especially, is to think it through to the end. end. Right? To the end. Ah, see, Joe already. <laughs> oh, I'm Ryan reading you. Every time. <laughs> it, it makes all the difference, yeah, especially with ambition. You know, when you say, oh, okay, I'm going to do this and get my, and then you ask, and then what? You ask people who talk about their ambitions and you say, and then what? Uh, 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 they don't know what to say. They, they never went that far, right? And then when they think about it, yeah, yeah. And you know when you know when then what really comes and smacks people upside the head and knocks them, you know, what do they say? Um, spout over tea kettle. Uh, <laughs> something else <laughs> over tea kettle, but I'm amending it a bit for Bina. <laughs> uh, but, you know, midlife crisis. That's when, that's when, and then what really comes and smacks you, yeah? That's when people realize they've, they've gotten everything that they have. And then somewhere, they, and now what, right? Mm -hmm. and that's when it all implodes and collapses and they have, that's why they're in crisis because they don't have an answer to the, and then what? Or they do and they realize, oh, you know, I spent all this time chasing this hollowness and here I am and I've gotten it and it's hollow, yeah? Not fun. Not fun. So very crucial, <laughs> very, very crucial to think it through to the end. Yeah. Yes. So I have a question for you. Because uh, when you say about the motivation and, of course, the ambition and aspiration, how to motivate ourselves without compromising our ethics? Because it, it kills that, that passion that, okay, yes, I can do that and I'm going to do this. Because mm -hmm. this is something, it's, like, it's coming from very, uh, from you can say that, okay, from inner side, that it is coming out. But, but then you have like, okay, now I have to compromise. I cannot compromise on my character. I cannot compromise on yeah. ethics. And then I have to let people go. How to actually keep us motivated? Love this question. Love Ooh. this question. It's a very, very profound question. And the answer is even more profound. Living via attunement. That's how ah, become yeah. attuned. Because here's the point. When I think about what I want, my motivations, the yeah. back of my mind, especially when I think it through, I, I start to realize, how do I know what's mm -hmm. right for me, what's best for me? I have no idea. What do I know compared to life, the universe? Yes, I, my humility says I, I may or may not know what is best for me. However, paying attention to attunement, and when you really understand what attunement is, then you come to understand what comes to you via mm -hmm. attunement is right, right, capital R, right, not right in a moralistic sense, but right for you, appropriate, in other words, for you, not only appropriate right now, but appropriate tomorrow, next year, next century, next life, whatever, right, appropriate in all contexts, and when you see things, and when they come to you, and you know that it is deeply, deeply right, that is incredibly motivating, how can you not do something that it's coming by, from such a profoundness, yeah, Bina? By coming to you, you mean that, okay, opportunities? Not just opportunity, but, but a motivation, idea, goal, inspiration, doesn't matter. However mm. it comes to you, it's where it's coming yeah. from. It's where, hmm. right? When we have typically in that hierarchy of motivations, the extended title that includes now goals and desires and wants and beliefs, ideas, where did that come from? Typically, it comes from somewhere inside us or we don't even know where it comes. We've just assimilated. We've picked it up. It comes from our family, True. our culture, our church, our work, our job, the corporation, whatever. You know, popular media, culture, movies, all of this stuff, right? That's where the stuff has come from. It hasn't come from anywhere actually real because that's all just stuff and nonsense, right? Mm. It doesn't have any realness to it. Yeah. But when it's coming from the universe or if, you, if you're religiously minded, it comes from God or Allah, Buddha, wherever. 
Krishna, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. When it's coming from that kind of a source, there's no doubt in it. It's a whole different logic. And that's where the motivation comes from, Bina. It's when you feel it to be real rather than hmm. something that, oh, it's just my idea. Yeah. Does that make wow. sense, Bina? <laughs> oh, yes, definitely it makes sense. But like, I would yeah. love to have some, some real life story about this thing, like to make sense that, okay, yes, everything, like how actually it works. Okay, I know that, okay, you have tons of stories about mm -hmm. practical stories, how these things come, because attunement is such a complex and very sophisticated concept. Uh, and to understand that, because when I'm scrolling my yeah. news feed on, on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, uh, a lot of motivational quotes come in and they Okay, I thought like, okay, oh, this is exactly according to my situation. Oh, this is coming from the universe. Yeah. But most of the time it doesn't because this is how I train my algorithm mm -hmm. to work. Okay, it's going to just focus yeah. on self-learning and growing. If I would be choosing cooking, then it will be like that. So <laughs> it is it is something not very reliable to just, okay, yeah, it is coming from the universe. Oh, so yeah. attunement is something like, okay, I, I really want to have next week, please share it with uh, some real life story where we can actually see the events and how things came up and to understand the attunement part of it. All right. So uh, oh, wow. I'll, I'll use a very personal story, a personal story of when Bina and I first met. Aww. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So I had put together Way of Impeccability, the core program. It's a life change and a self change program, right? And uh, which is at the root of mourner's culture. And I, I had finished it, and I wanted to test it, right? So I, I made a uh, an announcement, just a, a post in on Facebook, and I said, I'm looking for post-beta testers, right? Because it's already out of beta, yeah. it's ready to go. I want to just confirm everything. And we responded. Yes. Now, I said, in, in my thing there, uh, or at least when I explained to Bean, I don't know if I put it in the in the post itself, I said, you know, because it's post beta, there is some yeah. cost involved. Yeah? And, yes, and, and Bina said, well, uh, you know, I, I can't afford anything. And uh, I said, and I would I said, love oh, to, but I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. I said, there's, there's, there are many ways to fry a pancake. And then I said, you know, in other words, there's many ways to pay for something. You know, money's not the only way to pay for something. And, uh, you know, meaning that she could uh, help me with stuff and uh, all sorts of stuff. But the, the underlying motivation was, and I'm coming to the attunement part, okay. the underlying motivation behind that for me was uh, I wanted to make sure Bina was invested and motivated. Motivated, yeah. To, I, I was quite happy to say, well, I do it for free. It's no yeah. problem, you know, because I, I could hear Bina's earnestness. I could hear her, her mourness. I could hear that desire to really learn and grow and change. Right? I mean, she was very excited about this idea. It was a really big deal for her. I, I, was, I would be very happy to say I do for free. But, but by, <laughs> by putting some unspecified obligation that yeah. Bina had to fulfill, it motivates Bina because I know her integrity won't let her now, you know, partake and not put the effort in that's required, right? And exactly. that's exactly what happened. So I'm doing Bina a favor. It's a great courtesy for me to to put that little bit extra on, right? Yes. To yeah. put some kind of uh, investment from Bina, in other words. But now, where's the attunement here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the oddity, the unusualness, what points it out as saying, here's something special. When Bina came on, Right, the the her connection kept dropping. Right, uh, her internet it just kept on dropping. Ah, and over <laughs> and over again, we were probably on two or three hours, dropping, three hours. dropping, coming back. Now I have ridiculous patience. Something I worked on, and I, it's ridiculous. <laughs> We've right? dealt with because, that here before. Yeah, we do. We do right, often, don't we? Because right. I, mean, <laughs> I really worked. At it, yeah. I understood from way back in my life that patience is a superpower. So I said, Man, you know what? Mm -hmm. I, I don't particularly feel very smart or clever or whatever, but I know that with patience, that this is something I can acquire if I make the effort, right? So, all right, okay. Anyway, so I kept going and I was just patient. And this really, really, really struck Bina. It was, yes. uh, uh, it, it blew her away. And there was the anomalousness, right? Mm -hmm. that, that she was so taken by the patience and, and the courtesy and the consideration that went along with the patience. So that was a revelation to me. And it was something, wow, you know, this is, this is anomalous. Most people aren't that uh, connected or, or pay attention or have the inner uh, uh, purity 
to really appreciate something like this. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's pointing it out. Plus the fact that it had disconnected so often that that was the real anomaly. This continuousness, right? And I was just like beyond reason that it would keep on doing this. And so I'm saying something's going on here. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Mm -hmm. And of course, the more I paid attention, the more I saw and heard really. Yeah. Yes, I heard the purity, the moreness. Because whenever you meet somebody at the first time, you're hearing their, their public persona, you're hearing their cultural persona, you're hearing their ambitions, their status, their ideas, their beliefs, their shoulds, for instance. Right? But we have to learn to see past that. But we don't always get the opportunity to see past nope. that. And Bina was apologizing like you can't believe <laughs> Aw, she's <laughs> and, such a good girl. It was, it was heart-wrenchingly, heart-touchingly beautiful, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. how uh, put out Bina was, but I kept at it. So <laughs> I didn't let Bina off the hook by saying, okay, well, then come on. <laughs> Never let her oh. off the hook, right? And that, oh. too, is part of the anomaly. That oh. Bina, despite being grossly oh. uncomfortable, persisted because oh. she perceived yes. the bonus in yes. the off, right, Bina? And oh. it changes my life. Like forever. The, the, it was like, okay, now I can say that, okay, Bina before that incident and Bina after that. So, yeah. yes, I understand. But still, uh, I would love to continue with this attunement next week also because I do have a lot Perfect. of questions about it. Please. It's Thank very, you. But unfortunately, we're out of time. I'm so sorry. Yes. Yes. Next week. No. Next week. Next week. Yes. yes. Thank you so much for giving Guys. us time. Thank you so much, as okay. always. Nobelia.org. Thank you again. Yeah. And don't forget, go to the website, pick up a copy of the book. Hello. What's the title again? Uh, Ask Biela. Questions answered. Yes. Perfect. And plenty more. Go to the website. Bye. Thank you. Yes. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.